Um, but you know what? I was just like taking a deep breath and just relaxing into it. And it was like, yes, this is why coffee is a good thing. Um, so I'm sorry you picked that up. One of the things with this new Crowdcast version two is that the audio is definitely before the video, right? By about three seconds. Um, so if you're waiting for someone to appear, actually they can hear you like three seconds prior to. So got to watch out for that. <laughs> anyway, we're live, everybody. Welcome to Brain Food Live on Air, bringing it to you every Friday, no fail. It is episode 229, 229 of these we've done. Goodness me, that's at least five years worth of programming. Great to see everybody here. Uh, we're bringing it back to you. This is episode, this is part four of probably the most popular series we've ever done. And we know it's popular because we want to get into it. We want to learn. Um, but, and we're not tired of it. It is recruiter use cases for ChatGPT and other GAI tools. Uh, this is part four. Um, the last time we ran this, I think it was part three. That was six months or so ago. Um, and six months in the era of AI, as we now know, is it might as well be in the Jurassic. Um, the world has changed in that time. We're going to have to look and review what new things have come up. So uh, welcome to the show, everybody. I hope you're all uh, with us and here is okay. In fact, let's do that. Let's do some sound checks. I want to make sure that the audio and visual is fine. So if you're watching this on Crowdcast, uh, do let me know whether you can hear me okay. Um, I'm hoping to God that we are actually pro pro pushing this out on LinkedIn because we've had all kinds of craziness uh, that's preventing us from doing this. I've got a feeling it's not out there. Um, and it's really disappointing because basically every week I promote the event as a LinkedIn event um, and it's never there. Oh, it is there. Thank God. Um, I see 45, 46, 47 people watching on LinkedIn, at least that number and more. Uh, so if you're watching it on LinkedIn, do let me know whether you can hear me okay. Comment on the, on the thread. Um, I think lots of people are promoting this as well on their own LinkedIn. So Caroline Hunter, Juliana Park, uh, Rob Walker, of course. Um, if you're watching it on any of those folks LinkedIn, do let us know in the comments whether you can hear and see us. Okay, right. Um, listen, um, we should. Uh, uh, what should we do? We should. We should actually thank our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, so let's thank our sponsors for this show because every week, uh, Brain Food Live has gone sponsored. We've gone 229. I'm sure 228 of those have been sponsored. So thank you so much for the for the vendor. Uh, a sort of uh, community uh, to, to be bringing this uh, and supporting this event. Uh, Today is one of our repeat sponsors. It's Candidate. I just got a text from Alex. He said he can't make it. He's really sorry, Hong. He hasn't got the branding. So we can't bring Alex Van Claveren on to give the, give the, the, the pitch. I'm going to have to do it. He did send me a message to say, do you remember the free sourcing offer that he has made? Uh, so in other words, he's basically saying, if you have a job, and you want 20 candidates qualified and pipelined into that job, just email Alex and he'll do it. That's it. Um, there's literally no other uh, sort of, uh, there's no uh, trickery. There's no nothing. He's got resource. He's got capacity. He's going to deploy a, an experienced recruiter and stick 20 qualified candidates into your pipeline. This is the last week he's going to run it because I'm sure it's costing him money to do it. Um, and he said, look, this is the last ever. So if you want to get involved, um, you've got to email Alex at Alex. I think it's alexvk at, can at candidatewithak.com. I'll pull up that email and share it in the chat stream uh, so that uh, you can get access to it. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn, Alex Van Claveren, just search for him there and message him on LinkedIn and say you what you saw this on Recruiting Brain Food. Okay, cool. Um, let's say hello first to the wonderful Ala Pavlova, who's got new lighting, it looks like. It looks like you have new lights because um, you're, you're glowing there. Is that new lighting? I think it is. <laughs> yeah. It is a reason I was running also. I, I was, um, yeah, uh, in the pool, swimming pool, and then I had to run to be on time. So it's glowing because of running. <laughs> glowing because of exercise as well. Ala, wonderful to see you. I think most people know who you are, but I wonder whether you want to just introduce yourself real quick as well, uh, who you are, what it is you do. Yeah, so my name is Ala Pavlova. I'm based in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. I'm a still hands-on sorcerer. I work in gaming mostly. I train teams. And actually, I was a challenger for Alex candidate team. So they have a lot of sorcerers, and they're really, really experienced. And they basically told me, hey, challenge our sorcerers. And it was quite interesting. Um, yeah, in the day-to-day -day life, I play a lot. So please uh, connect with me if you're into gaming. And uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of everything Han Lee does. And um, I'm super happy to be the host here. And I have a question that Han, I must ask. How do you manage never miss the brain food life? How? 
How, how do I manage? I, I have a I have a twin. Um, I, that's I, the I, secret. I, oh, like oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, people I, all look I, the same. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I, it, he's instructed to make sure he looks exactly the same. Um, and we just take alternate weeks. It's like you know, it's okay. It's fine. It's it's, it's probably a decent way to be. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how you do it. Um, no. Um, okay. Let's uh, review the newsletter real quick. Ala, uh, did you read it last week? And if so, uh, what was interesting? Yeah, I'm going to drop, uh, or maybe you're going to drop the links, yeah. But uh, what what was interesting for me, the message, um, uh, Roblox, uh, the future of how uh, we work together. Uh, so basically, I think it's a very tough decision to make a public statement that your company's um, employees are coming back to the office. And um, uh, there is a trend that everyone is saying that um, you, like, if you're a company, you would like people to stay in the office. And if you're in, in employers or you would like to, employees, sorry, you would like to work remote. And this is becoming, a, a, in a way, like uh, uh, even um, women are saying, hey, I would like to work uh, remote because it's giving me opportunity to be closer to like kids if I have, or this kind of thing. So um, I think it's very, very tough. Uh, and the explanation was about the culture, et cetera. Um, it's just interesting for me to read because uh, I'm mm, myself uh, advocating for at least hybrid, but remote is, uh, is, is, is the best. But um, I was exactly surprised um, that there are categories of people who are OK to work remote and categories of people who are not so OK to work remote. And that's that's it makes me a little bit uh, concerned. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. Week. It's it's a re it's a really good read. So for folks who don't know, Roblox, who are the online gaming uh, universe, if you like, um, they've called everyone back to the office. Big move for them, obviously, having previously committed not to do that. Uh, so they've had to do a U-turn. Um, two things. I thought the CEO message was actually well phrased and well done. We've seen how ap appalling ways in which this has been done. I thought this is a very tough thing to do, and he's done it quite well. Um, but at the same time, you can also understand um, that this is not compatible for a lot of people and very difficult uh, also. I want to defend the CEOs a little bit. I kind of said this online and, and people are hammering me for it, um, but that's OK. I mean, I, I still think I'm, the, the CEOs are kind of right um, in the sense that you do get a different type of information exchange when people are in office, because obviously it's a richer environment in terms of communication. Um, I think everyone knows that's true. Um, it, it comes at cost. You've got to pay for the office. People got to commute in. It's a big problem for a lot of individuals, depending on length of commute and type of road you have. Um, but I can understand the CEO perspective. And in fact, if you look at it, uh, the people who are saying in or out, it is very clear. Like the CEO, senior management are saying in, entry level, junior level people saying in because they want to learn. And then it's the senior individual contributors that don't want to do it. So we the, the, the solution might have to be we stratify the business um, so that, yeah, OK, you know, if you are a senior ind individual contributor, you can work remote, um, but maybe access to, you know, the team management career track or the leadership track. Maybe that's not going to happen for you um, because you've got to be in to do the mentorship and the coaching for the younger people coming in uh, and what have you. So anyway, really interesting. Uh, but. It's useful for us in the community if, for instance, your company is about to make this move, then that is a decent example of a sort of email you might want to write. Um, okay, Ala, um, give us another one. Another one uh, is, uh, interesting enough, I'm like a huge fan of data and everything. So uh, they read about the most important recruiting metric uh, you have never heard of, time to enlightenment. And uh, this is true. I will be very transparent. I have never measured how much time it takes to align on things and i have never put a pause uh and um yeah i i just really recommend it it's a short article but it's enlightening in a way like hey alignment takes time yeah 100 percent. john vlast leaked writing that one of the best uh contributors the thinker i call him a thinker doer because he's still like doing uh, a significant part of the role he's very he's kind of close to the people who are working but he's also producing some amazing content there as well um so uh, so yeah absolutely the missing or hidden cost to recruiting what is the time it takes to you for you to align with the other stakeholders in the in the business um we don't count, count that but maybe you should because it's um you know our responsibility to shrink that down as far as possible okay ala give us one more before we get into the meat of this yeah so i wanted to mention uh people later reports uh, for two reasons um one the report is beautiful and uh what i'm missing right now 
uh, when I'm also working on the data reports is to have some proven data, to have like hundreds of people participated and so sharing their opinions. So this is th this report is very detailed, explaining um, how many people would like to work remote, what companies are doing about that, um, and all the contributors you can see. I also like that. So this is an example of the nice, nicely done report. And I'm curious if they used any AI for that, <laughs> um, but it looks very beautiful. And uh, right now in the 2nd and the 3rd November, uh, in late summer in Bogota, Colombia, Handy is going to be there presenting and the talent summit. And I think that's, um, that's huge. So, um, I am, I'm going to be in Colombia in the next week. Uh, it's crazy. Um, and, and really, I, I've really got to do this presentation because I haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, it's, it should be interesting. I'm delighted to be in Colombia. I think some of you are there, Juliana, I think in the, in the chat, maybe in Bogota as well. Uh, I think one of the really important things that we have to do as a global community is to understand um, that there's just lots of areas of the world that have their own recruiting challenges and their own recruiting techniques that we often don't hear from, uh, particularly if you're uh, operating exclusively in a single language environment. So brain food is obviously entirely uh, done in English. Um, that means we're not getting any input from any Spanish speaking places, not getting any input from uh, any Arabian type of uh, places, very little in Africa, very little in Asia. So all of those places, guess what? There's like billions of people there um, and there's billions of people being recruited. <laughs> um, so we need to open our eyes, open our ears and input from different sources and not just look at the, the main ones that we see. That runs true, by the way, for recruiting and indeed anything else. You have to have a diverse series of opinions. We need to have a poly um ecosystem and that's one of the things i'm trying to do with brain food uh elevate uh sort of everyone who perhaps doesn't have a strong enough voice to date okay cool let's get on with the show uh recruiter use cases of chat gbt al i'm not going to put you on a spot you're meant to be the, the co-host today but obviously you are still being an active sourcer and you are still very innovative and in working their various things in the last six months what kind of things have you um have you encountered that you thought you know that's quite an interesting way to use generative ai um have, has there been anything and, and what have you implemented in your workflow so i would like to share something in the chat it's like a christmas gift uh, uh, but it's not christmas so that's why it's just a gift uh, so there's a link to the document that uh, people can access um it's absolutely free so i get it just a few really nice um, uh, tools that you can see. They're all relevant to recruitment. And um, uh, I love, uh, love using right now Whimsical. So this is the tool that um, uh, generates um, uh, the mind, uh, mind maps uh, for whatever topic you're working on. So it's user charge of tea. Um, and uh, yeah, you can give any topic and it can break it in pieces. And it helped me to really build the whole uh, flow of things. So, there are tools like Bardeen, there are tools like um, um, Engage AI. I love it because Engage AI says to me, Vanessa, by the way, is here, uh, says, hey, Vanessa already posted three times, uh, so she posts this and that, so you can do a better job and say so you can post four times and this is what you can do. <laughs> so this is really a fight between AIs right now. Um, uh, I love that. So yeah, just use it if anyone would like to uh, try any tools. So please go ahead. That's amazing. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that, Allah. I can see already 54 people are on it. Um, folks, whilst you're looking at this, why don't you grab the URL? And if you're broadcasting this on LinkedIn, stick it in your LinkedIn thread as well. Um, let's make sure most people are aware of it. So thank you very much, Ala Pavlova. Really, uh, really, really awesome share. Um, okay, great stuff. Let's bring on some of our guests. We've got loads of people to bring on. And I think we're going to do it one by one because I want to give everyone the time that they need. Uh, Dov Zavadskis, where are you, Dov? I'm going to bring you on ASAP because I know you've been emailing me. And I think you might not be able to be, hang around too far. So I'm going to bring you on ASAP. Um, and then if you need to scoot off, um, uh, we're going to we're gonna at least grab some time off you uh, as we can. So hopefully that will work. Um, oh, by the way, Allah, just think on that spreadsheet, um, I know it's kind of your thing, but I wonder whether it might be useful to open it up for other people to edit in some way and maybe add their own shit on. Uh, what do you reckon? Um, that yeah, useful? yeah, I can do that. Yep, yep, yep. I can do that. Uh, everyone with link can edit it. Uh, but yeah, just um, I always suggest, hey, just make a copy and uh, change it. But I'm planning to change it because, uh, uh, yeah, some juniors are uh, from my sourcing gems. Uh, they help gems, me. Uh, oh, Dob, hey. Oh, Dob, how are you doing, man? This man oh, is in a car. vehicle. He's <laughs> he's in a vehicle. What's going on? 
Dov, if you're driving, man, I'm not comfortable with you talking about this. And also, you you are you're on mute in a strange way. I wonder whether that is something he can hear me. I think he can hear us, can't can't he? Um, yeah, he can. We can't hear you, bro. Maybe maybe the the take the mic take the mic out maybe. Yeah, uh, wait, but he has panda. Yeah, so um, he has a panda here. He um, no, <laughs> uh, but Dov, listen, mate. Don't be driving and talking. This is probably not a good move. Um, but um, yeah, wherever I don't know how long your journey is, but maybe once you parked up, ping, ping. Oh yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry guys. Let's try to speak. <laughs> no, no, we got you. We got you. Hey, listen, are you driving, man? Because if you are, I'd rather, I'd rather us not nope, continue to call. That's a driver. Okay, okay, All perfect, good. perfect. I'm, I'm very safe. A person that's been involved in car accidents, man. I'm not going to be involved in another one. Um, okay. Nope. Um, so, um, so, okay, Dov, listen, for the people who don't know you, why don't you quickly introduce yourself? Who are you? What it is you do? Sure. So I'm Dov. I was living in London for way too long now, and I relocated back to Lithuania. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been focusing as a talent sourcer. Uh, and now I, at the, from the beginning of the year, kind of started exploring uh, ChatGPT and other AI tools. And now, since July, I started training people in other companies to use specifically ChatGPT and some other quirky tools of AI. So I kind of pivoted it into something else. No, I, I love it. I love the was it um, the, the the strap line, which is uh, to to be your to was it something about making friends with AI or something like this? Um, yep. I think that's be friend AI. Yeah. Be friend AI is perfect because even though I, I would say a decent percentage of people have been involved in it, uh, it is also the case that uh, there's a friction point. A lot of people feel like potentially uncomfortable with it. Um, so um, let's 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 kind of um, dive into the topic area um, in terms of the uh, bits of AI that you've encountered uh, over the last six months or so, Dov, um, that you can say, you know what? Um, uh, this is actually particularly useful for my own life as a recruiter. Um, have you encountered anything uh, that you would say uh, stri strikes you as that? So, uh, uh, oh, okay, Dom, we I need an AI for that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever happened, whatever oh, what? happened, froze you. Um, Maybe video, uh, video off. Yeah, try no, video no, no, it's off. fine. He's, he's back. He's back. He's back. Okay. Speak no. again. No. Uh, I don't think it's working. Uh, can either. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let maybe let's try like this. So, so basically, uh, the way that I'm, you know, I've identified two big problems in the recruitment process. Uh, a are the hiring managers that don't know what they're doing uh, or what they're looking for. So if someone is newly uh, appointed, uh, you know, then they don't necessarily know the processes. And then the second part would be the job descriptions that don't show you the reality of what you're actually looking for. So the only, like I found the solution to this challenge. Uh, uh, so I I call it like deep dive conversation with chat uh, where you can program the conversation and ask chat GPT, ask you questions instead. So you can sit down and you can say, hey, I'm I'm a hiring manager. I'm looking, you know, this is the size of my team. These are the competencies that we have. You know, what can you ask me questions one by one uh, that would help me understand the role better and what we're looking for better? I don't know if you can hear me or if I'm, if I'm breaking. You are breaking, but I think I get it. So what you're saying is uh, what are the, one of the best things you can do with ChatGBT is actually have it interview you. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. So basically, it becomes like a strategy session between you and AI. And you're not the one you're, who's asking questions. You're the one who's answering questions. Because, you know, there are a lot of solutions online. Hey, take this job description and we're going to help you with AI to, to change it, edit it. We're not solving the problem because the job description is still old. But when we are giving a lot of information in the form of our answers, uh, you know, we're clarifying what we're looking for, what, what we need. 
if we have any specific uh, you know, category of people that we're targeting, maybe the different tone of voice and everything, right? So we give a lot of information and then uh, ChatGPT will remember that specific conversation that we're having. And then we are giving unique content and we're giving context which means that by giving that context, the output of ChatGPT will be much more, uh, like the quality is going to be much better. Okay. So and I you can just... then say, and then you can, for example, say, okay, you know, uh, and you don't know how many questions you will have. It can be 10, 15, you know, whatever. And you can say, okay, now can you create a brief for a recruiter? Can you now take this and create a job description? Can you now take this and maybe create some questions for the job interview and so on? because you already have all the bases that you know what you're looking for. And then you can start all the next steps to start going looking for people. Yeah, so I think that the key points here, I think, is going to be uh, the idea of um, uh, uh, content and context. Um, so those two things really need to go together when it comes to interacting uh, with these tools. Uh, content is obviously the stuff you're talking about, but it's also the surrounding bits of information that may simply be missing. Uh, <laughs> we're not aware of because we're, we're, it's in our subconscious or we've presumed that everyone else in the room knows about it. Remember, the first time you interact with any AI, um, it, it will come at it as a very fast calculator, but will have almost zero context in terms of your specific situation. So you need to interact with it in many, many cases. The more, the better, to be honest with you. Uh, and in fact, one of the things you can do with ChatGPT, and I think you can do it with some of the other um, uh, uh, GPTs as well, is that you can pre-configure it. Um, to, so you can sort of instruct it, say, look, at every search, um, bear in mind that I am a recruiter doing this, or I am working in this country, or I'm working in this language, uh, or whatever it might be. And that just gives it that additional bits of information um, that can make a difference. Um, I, I need to add something here. Be careful, uh, because it depends how you use it. Because if, for example, I build different expert personas for different uh, you know, occasions, so in my pocket and ChatGPT have maybe 50, 60 different people, you know, that have very specific thing. If I have a custom instructions, which is what it is, then it will break that uh, uh, persona and that will give me like false positives or the information that I don't need. So as an example, you know, from what I was sharing, uh, you know, you can say, hey, I want you to act as a as a, a let's say a chief people officer who works within tech and has experience within European market or, or Amsterdam, Netherlands, London, whatever, you narrow things down to very, very concrete example. But then if your goal will be to have job description created after that, you can say, and I want you to have experience as a copywriter. Uh, you know, you start piling up the experiences of different people uh, that can actually help you. So in a very short way, Whenever you, before you even go into ChatGPT, just think of what is the, what is the challenge that you're trying to solve, and who in in real life would be able to help you in the form if we if it's a famous person, that's their name. Is it any background, any experience, any certification, anything that can narrow things down? Just like you have horse races, you put the blinders on the horses that they would focus. It's the same thing. I hope I was not breaking. No, 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 we got you, but I think you are breaking. Dov, thank oh. you very much for this. Safe driving where you're at. We're gonna have to let you go because we've got lots of people to bring on. Wonderful to see you, oh, by okay. the way, man. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Hopefully we'll chat soon, folks. Let's do that. Uh, do we have the Q&A in this new version? <laughs> oh, we people do. people really drop in the, the good questions, so maybe we oh, can okay. try Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, folks, um, you put the questions in the Q&A section. Um, on the right hand, you should see sort of a, a bar there. Go, go ahead and check it out there. The questions you definitely want to have answered, put it in there and we'll go to them towards the end of the end of the show. OK, cool. Um, let's bring on some of our other guests. Um, we're going to bring on Alexandra. Let's see whether we can bring Alexandra on. It's actually not let me do that. Why is that? I don't think I've. I don't think that's worked. Oh yeah. So someone's I'm actually sure trying to get on. See you quite well. So I think I am here. Oh, she's here. Hello, Alex. Good Hi to there. see you. <laughs> Wonderful to see you, Alex. Um, can you quickly introduce yourself? Who are you? What it is you do? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. So hi there, I am Alexandra from the Source Code Agency, and I am on a mission uh, to support sourcers and recruiters to to make something big. So I, my, I am on a mission to make source, sourcing not just fun, but effective. And uh, by providing training and by providing consultancy, and I have a not so secret children, uh, the sourcing quizzes. So it means that I am working on uh, sourcing quizzes just like LinkedIn, sourcing bin LinkedIn, and now on diversity. Uh, so this is my story in a nutshell. And I'm a sourcing fanatic, so I am more than happy to talk about any sourcing related questions here or in LinkedIn, of course. Great. Wonderful to see you on the show, Alexandra. Um, I've just shared Alex's LinkedIn there. So if you want to connect with Alex, go ahead and do that. Um, Alex, recruiter use cases for ChatGPT and generative AI. Have you uncovered anything over the last six months? So we're talking about recency that you thought, okay, this is new. This is worth us knowing about. Uh, what's your favorite thing that you've discovered? Yeah, I, I think so. I would like to bring in a different aspect. So, I, of course, I can talk a lot about this topic, so more than should be friendly uh, regarding the length. So, I think that now it is high time to, to talk about our level of consciousness. So, for example, the first step when we just ask ChatGPT to write a job description. So, and then we get something that is that then the only unique thing is the company name. So it is not something that you can be proud of. So this is, I think, this is why I think that there is a next level uh, in consciousness. So just try to work on, for example, the prompts. So it means that you can uh, add the context, you can define the role, you can add what to do and what not to do. So for example, not to put, uh, I hope you are doing well in front of a cold email. And of course, you can move forward, just write and create. So you can ask ChatGPT to prove this something, compare, to analyze, to have a role play, uh, to create a sentiment analysis. You can ask it to create a data analysis with, uh, with the advanced data analysis function. And then you will realize that your prompt will be quite long. And to be honest, we are not there to create something academic. So we are there to find candidates, to engage candidates, and of course, to hire someone. And this is why I think it is really important to, to move forward uh, to the third stage of AI consciousness. And for example, to use the custom instructions. And it is available both in the free version and both in the uh, paid version of ChatGPT. I just saw it in the, in the chat as well. And I think it is really important to use it, uh, even if we are a sourcer, recruiter, or other TA professional, because there, uh, ChatGPT, we have two questions that, uh, who are we and what are our, our expectations? And I think it is really important to add this because then it will give you a different uh, quality level regarding the answers. So for the end of course, we can not skip, but we can mitigate the limitations of ChatGPT. So for example, uh, recently I worked on diversity quizzes and ChatGPT uh, kept shutting down our conversation saying that I am a racist asshole, which is not true. Uh, so I just try to create sourcing quizzes and try to showcase bad examples as well. And then after I explained it in the custom instructions that uh, I am a diversity expert, I am working in sourcing, uh, then it was able to handle it. And of course, we can say that we are sourcers, recruiters, we can define our roles there. And then the chat GPT will be completely different. So I'm, I highly recommend you can reach it, uh, click on your name uh, on the left corner of ChatGPT and you will get something different. And I am happy to copy my whole custom instructions to the chat here so you can use it, try it. So for example, uh, last time I just asked it to create me a sourcing strategy for a, a machine learning engineer in London. And it was able to give me back, for example, X-ray strings uh, for Kaggle and just give me back a list of meetup groups. So it can be quite powerful but what is really important to move forward. So not just write me a job description and say nothing and not just create lengthy prompts, but to move forward and to use, for example, the custom instructions. So it can be really, really useful in ChatGPT and you can reach it uh, in the free version as well. 
And okay, what is so folks, uh, did you want to see um, Alex's custom instructions that she uses herself? Let us know in the comments. Yes, no, maybe. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, uh, how the heck do you share screen with this new version? Because I was thinking this would be <laughs> quite kind of useful uh, to to show people how it works. But I'm not sure even how uh, how, how to how operate. To... Uh, so it mutes then uh, the camera and then the share screen. It what? Uh, it's close to the mute button, so uh, it's on your right, mm -hmm. right lower right. It's mute and then the camera and then the share uh, screen. I actually button. don't see this. Uh... On your right below, in front of people emojis. Oh, yeah, I, so I see, I see. Oh my god, how fucking crap is that? All right, sorry. Um, anyway. <laughs> There it is. Take children out of the screen. Children out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see it. You just uh, click on your name, click on the custom instructions, and there you can see, for example, the verbosity level. There you can see the different roles. Of course, as I mentioned, I am happy to copy it and you can use it. And you will get a different chat GPT using uh, that system. And I am happy to uh, give you some details on that. So I'm, I highly I'm recommend to use it. It is free. So, I've just got a really good idea because uh, uh, I think it would be actually be very interesting from a personality point of view if we were able to compare our custom instructions. It will become like almost a little bit of a, oh, who are you really? Uh, <laughs> you know I, mean? it's like... I, just mentioned, I always tell this example that you can find sources in procurement. So for example, and we are not interested in procurement as a sourcer, so it is always important to Say that hello, I am not in I am not interested in supply chain analysis and so on and so on. So and then you can and using the custom instruction, then it is enough to use only a short prompt and not a 10 pages long instruction list. Yeah, so, so for folks who don't uh, just to again underline what this is, custom instruction is almost like a pre-built set of yeah. prompts or, 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 or elements of a prompt that it will use every time. So rather than have you kind of write a long string of all kinds of stuff, it takes you ages. Um, actually, you can just tell it to do certain things. So for instance, I, I always get annoyed when um, ChatGBT comes back to say, oh, I'm an AI. So I always tell it, don't ever tell me you're an AI. I know you're a fucking AI. You know, Should I don't want to know. Theater. I will share it with you as well, and you won't see that message again. So that There's I a response answer. filter? How do you do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. I will copy it into the chat as well. So use Okay. It. Amazing. So, all right. So this is a really, this is quite a new innovation, isn't it? Because it's only come out. Um, it wasn't certainly in the first version of this. So custom instructions, obviously open AI's response to people writing overly long prompts because um, it takes just so, such what a long time. Is that it is not so new. What is new that ChatGPT can now see and hear. So you can upload images, you can upload process charts and so on. And what is new that uh, from this week, it uh, is trained until the April 2033. So, uh, so it means that uh, now it will be much better again. Yeah, so it's always going to be as up to date as possible. Yeah. And uh, it, it'll, it'll, it's much better bringing in references, even mm -hmm. though um, it will still bring in references of dead stuff. Um, so I've noticed that sometimes it'll bring in, so, the, so the, the internet itself is an ecosystem that kind of lives and dies. There's pages out there that exist as URLs, but the, the page itself is broken. Um, and sometimes you get that type of output as well. So interesting. Tell me about how you've used it recruiting wise um, uh, that you found most useful, um, Alex. So, so the, the, the custom instructions, I think, definitely give you the, the substrate to build a really strong and efficient way of working. Um, is there anything like particularly that, that surprised you even when you're looking at any of these tools? Uh, to be honest, I am plugin uh, addicted. So it means that it is only available in the paid version. Just a short story. Uh, so for example, there is a plugin co uh, called Ask Your Code and I learned it from Dennis Dankiewicz, so kudos to him. So for example, you can ask this plugin to interpret a GitHub repository and ask it to highlight elements that I can use in a code outreach email. So it is mind blowing. So give it a try. It is called the Ask Your Code. You can give it a GitHub repository. It will find you elements that you can use it in your mail. So it can be quite really, really effective. And on the other hand, uh, my favorite one is the box script. So it is for summarizing, for example, YouTube videos. 
So it, it can be really useful. So for example, when there is a one hour long YouTube video, you don't have time, but really interested in the content, you just throw the link and ask it to highlight the elements. And of course you can ask several things. And one last thing, the uh, KeyMate plugin that you can build your own knowledge base, a corporate knowledge base. So for example, you can share your findings with your colleagues. You can build up your own uh, sourcing strategy and you can refer back to it. So it is really powerful as well. So all of these are plugins in ChatGBT, is yes, that correct? Yes, yes. So, yes, so again, so folks who don't know, ChatGBT has a plugin store. It kind of is an app store, so it feels very much like that's the direction of travel, but it basically can enhance uh, ChatGBT uh, and put it in different places. So the three things you mentioned, very quick summary, uh, there was the um, uh, a GitHub kind of uh, uh, sort of analyzer uh, that you can then pull information in if you're messaging a software engineer. Uh, there was the uh, audio video type of transcriber. Someone should do that on Brain Food Live, by the way. Obviously, obviously, you talk for ages. Um, and uh, there was a knowledge share, knowledge based thing. So share the links into the chat stream, folks. Okay charge in and use these things um okay alex listen we'll have to let you go it's a roll on roll off this week uh great to see you and thank you so much for your efforts and your work uh, alex definitely a person you need to be following folks thanks uh, alex a lot of people were asking about uh, the input if you can share so that will be amazing and there are a few things to share in the chat as well um a prompt um a pal uh, the tools like that so they're helping you to start uh, learning how to do a good uh, prompting um i personally enrolled myself to um a, like prompting engineering course oh my god it's it's quite challenging but it's it's very helpful so now i, I would say it's uh, it will be like a a general knowledge of Excel or anything. So there will be the same important to know uh, just how the uh, prompt engineering working. See, this is why your career is still going forward and mine is like already going downhill. Alex, uh, it's you not know, true. <laughs> like, like you're, you're, you're like learning new shit and thinking, oh, I could do this. Absolutely right. Folks, if you knew how to search the internet before the internet became a big thing, if you knew how Boolean search operated, would you not be faster and better in your job? Would your career not have just literally accelerated? It's the same as it is now. We've got to get good at prompting because if we're, if we're still typing in the basic stuff, we're literally being left behind by individuals that truly know how to uh, interact with software. So it's no longer just retrieving information, you're interacting with it and building your capabilities with it. And I think as we recruit people in future, we're gonna look for that degree of interaction as something that we would value as an employee or a colleague, or even as a supplier. If you're speaking, let's say you're hiring a recruiter, for instance, someone to supply to me i'm going to want to know exactly how skillful they are using some of these tools because i know the productivity gains there are going to be like plus 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 um okay very good stuff uh prompt engineering courses i totally agree everyone should like uh, avail themselves to it okay actually as we're moving from forward uh johannes and alex uh will bring you on uh, again shortly but we're going to take this moment as we always do in the middle of every show um uh, we're going to try and make sure that, that this conversation continues and everyone is well, well connected with other people in the industry uh that essentially uh care about this particular sourcing topic uh so now is the time where you've got to just grab your LinkedIn URL, stick it in the chat stream, and then make sure you connect with everyone who's done the same. If you're watching this on any of the LinkedIn live streams, that's the way you got to do it as well. Grab the URL, stick it in the comment thread, and then connect to everyone else that you've seen do that. Um, and uh, bottom line is, we've probably got about 500 people watching this across different channels, maybe even more. Uh, bottom line is, you're going to walk away with 50, 60, 100 new connections um, that are going to help your swarm intelligence. We're talking about artificial intelligence. One other form of intelligence, I think, uh, will be a counterparty to AI, will be crowd intelligence, swarm intelligence. What can you get from the community? Um, uh, if you have a strong community, you've been a great com contributor to it, guess what? You can tap into it and actually uh, it will, it will pr produce you information that maybe AI can't. Uh, so make sure you do that, folks. Okay, we're going to bring on... Let's bring on Alex, the second Alex. Um, um, there's so many people watching this, I can't even find people. Uh, let me just uh, try <laughs> this. Did you say you're Alexander? He has as well. I, Alexander Chukovsky, there he is. Hans raised, he's accepted. Let's go here. Boom. 
there's a hands raising thing here. I forgot about this. Oh, by the way, we might do open mic in a bit. So everyone just walk in a bit later. <laughs> so, so we'll take a risk on this one. Uh, but let's bring on Alex first. Um, there he hey, is. How's it going? Wonderful to see you, Alex. Hey. Nice um, to see you guys. Hi. Great. To for a few people who don't know you, Alexander, can you quickly introduce yourself? Who are you? What it is you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I run niche job boards in crypto and AI. Crypto is still an alive industry. It's not dead. Uh, so please, no comments about that. <laughs> and in my free time, I consult job boards, uh, ATSs, and aggregators on topics from natural language processing, uh, automation of job processing, SEO, Google Jobs optimization, these type of funny topics. And Alex is another great person to follow on LinkedIn. I've just shared the, uh, his, his LinkedIn on there. I think essential follow. Um, reason why is because of uh, you are a little bit esoteric, Alex. So you end up uh, sort of operating in places that are a little bit beyond the comfort zone of most people. Um, but it's relevant. Um, it's just that a lot of people, I think, are a little bit frightened of it or just, just a little bit off piste. But Alex skis off piste, and therefore he gives us this information and input that you would not discover elsewhere. A central person to follow. Okay, um, Alexander, topic is recruiting use cases for chat gbt in the last six months um so obviously been super fast innovation rate no one can keep track of it uh, but what have you encountered over this period of time that you thought okay this is innovative this is something that i can use other people need to be using when it comes to recruiting well i mean i run a job board right so um it's not exactly direct recruiting but we do have a small placement business that we're on the site for uh crypto companies and we have built a simple pre-qualification system uh, using OpenAI. I'm not going to hide it. And it works very simple. So in crypto, a lot of jobs are remote, right? So you have to make sure that some of the basics are already met, you know, stuff like which, which time zones can you work in? Which countries are you based in? Uh, what is your like salary expectations? How do you want to get paid? Do you accept crypto? All these things so we are able to get them out of the job descriptions using ChatGPT, some very simple prompts I'm not gonna call this prompt engineering because it's just asking questions uh get a structured json back you know with the questions put them as a custom apply form ask people to fill them out uh and then evaluate the questions again with open ai um, dump the results in a google sheet and then, you know, just quickly check if uh, they're correct or not. And I would say that right now our acceptance rate of candidates that come through this process is about 90%. So very, very interesting. Let me just reiterate and restate as I understand this. So you've basically created, you've used AI multiple uh, sort of instances in the same flow in order to essentially interview the candidates uh, or, or, or at least collect and validate certain types of essential information so that the recruiter is, is jumping into the flow further downstream um, and therefore able to immediately see yes, no, maybe on these candidates on, on a spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. That's the short story. So because these are knockoff factors, right? So um, if you are supposed to be based in Germany for a remote role, but you're actually based in London, then it's not a match, right? And if you're not willing to relocate, that's also not a match. So you can immediately consider these as uh, bad matches. And there are about seven or eight specifics in crypto that we have encountered. So getting the job description uh, to give you these kind of questions and put them in a template has been very easy with open ai so that saves us so much time and then once you have the information out in an excel sheet in a google sheet you just literally read through it and it's a lot faster to read through two prompts and compare them and say they're true or false rather than um rather than you know just reading the text yourself so that has been a pretty pretty big game changer us. Yeah, especially if when you're when you're thinking about your reading and comparing, you're switching between documents. Uh, you're trying to hold information in your head. It's it's a lot of cognitive effort. And much easier to literally see it on a single page, and then you can compare uh, the the candidates. And I didn't even catch it, but basically, you have a way in which you can ingest the information from the job description in order to produce the questions. Uh, is that is that correct, Alex? Yeah, I mean in. Probably 80% of the cases, the information is already present. Uh, if not, we have to add it additionally by asking the hiring managers. Uh, but there are 
you can also automate these uh, processes, to be honest, but it's mostly present in the job description. And uh, I like to use AI in cases where I can verify that the generated output is actually correct, right? Hallucinations, keyword, everyone knows about it. And when you do this this way, you can actually pinpoint back to the exact place in the description where uh, the term was present. So for example, the time zone or like the working hours that are expected or whether or not someone has to be based in a specific country. So you can actually verify if the question that you have generated is based on real information and not some kind of hallucination. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, a quick question to the audience, folks. How many of you have deployed some sort of like uh, interview pre-screening um, on your jobs uh, that you have published out there? I, I suspect most of us haven't. Uh, so we're still having to individually interact with candidates, whether email or text or whatever it might be, to just go through this process. Think, think about how much time that's going to take uh, per candidate on, on aggregate. It could be massive, particularly if you've got a high applicant flow. Uh, I don't think that's the case for, for, for crypto. It's ever, never been particularly high applicant flow, I would say. Um, it's very high. It's, it's, it's very high right now. Just everyone needs a job. <laughs> everyone needs a job. Oh, my God. But, hey, you can imagine that it's in untenably high. I, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who posted something on LinkedIn saying, I'm hiring, and he had to deal with a thousand comments on his post, he said. Um, and he even he didn't even deal with it properly because people were criticizing him for his, for his lack of uh, ability to get back to folks. So it's, it's, it's getting to the point where we cannot not use some sort of tooling because a human being does not have the time to go through all of that. Even if you dedicated all your time, you're not going to be able to get through it. It's a simple time in the day. So this is something that's going to be deployed. You got a choice, folks. You got to buy a bit of software, do uh, sort of and cost yourself some money, or you could DIY it like Alex has done. I mean, how 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 easy is it this to do, Alex? I mean, bear in mind you're a person that probably has more technical literacy than most. Um, how easy would it be for someone like me who basically is clueless uh, to implement and put this together? I wouldn't say that it's that hard because there are plugins that you can use to build your, you know, chat GPT API requests, but um, it's also not something that you can just hack away in a day using Zapier. Um, so you need some engineering skills to, to do that, unfortunately. But if you have a junior Python engineer in your team that is bored, I'm pretty sure they can do this very quickly. A recruiter with a, with a technical friend. Um, you can, in fact, this is something that's actually worth paying a juniorish person to do. Um, because bear in mind that uh, technical folks, uh, they're not having as good a market as they've seen over the last period of time, particularly on the junior level. So potentially you could get some of this you know, small bits that are built for you uh, that could really help your case. Uh, and I'm here, I'm coaching myself because I'm looking at how busy the heck I am. And I'm thinking way too much is still manually processing. Uh, so I absolutely need uh, this to go forward. Okay, give us one more thing, Alex, real quick before we bring your, your Hannes on. Um, what are the things have you encountered over the last uh, sort of six months that you think, okay, this is interesting. I'm going to invest a bit more time in figuring this out. Yeah, so, well, I do a lot of job scraping and job scraping is, of course, a pretty dirty business because the data is unstructured and getting it into a structured format is a pain. Is pain. <laughs> Um, and once ChatGPT released the um, image um, functionality, I have been trying it and you will be surprised, but it worked extremely well for extracting job descriptions out of screenshots. Um, that has been like mind blowing. And uh, I recently tried it on profiles in certain uh, networks, not to mention names. Don't want to get sued by someone. And it works also surprisingly well. I mean, I can also show you a, uh, I don't know if I can share my screen, but maybe I can show it for a second. Yeah. Am I allowed to? You can right, absolutely share your screen. Let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to share my whole screen. So, see my screen? I'm confident no. we will in a second. Is it? Yeah, it gets better in it. Yeah. So, it's close to the muting yourself. So it's at the bottom right hand of the. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 you used it, yeah. Okay. Oh, Alexandra, thank you for sharing. Everyone was asking uh, for your uh, input. Thank you, thank you. So it's in the chat. Yeah, custom instructions now? from Alexandra. Give it a sec, uh, Alex. Um, I have faith in the system for some reason. 
Um, we might I have found to... the button. I found yeah, the button. We, we might have to sit in silence. I don't think it's working. Um, okay. Uh, don't worry about it, man. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of keep uh, chewing over this, but uh, wonderful to have you on the show, Alex, um, and to get your input. Um, uh, this is obviously an exciting space. Um, we want to make sure that we can continue learning about this. So uh, follow Alexander. Uh, he's a person that is always talking at the front edge of uh, exploration when it comes to tech. Uh, but great to see you, Alex. We're going to have to let you go at this point. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Look, Pl Johannes. Plugins. Yeah, everyone is talking about the plugins and being uh, uh, addicted to it. But it's amazing. One of the plugins actually helps you to build the data reports. And uh, um, Irina Shamava, she was sharing that he, she, she just uh, fit some um, Excel's and asked, like, hey, think about it. So what are you going to give me? And actually, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So um, I'm curious uh, if we can pick up better the data reports. As well. Yeah, data basically uh, visualization used to be a huge um, and probably still is. It's I mean, still, it's, it's, still is. yeah, it's still, it's still, still is. a very high value skill, but it's been hugely democratized. It's no longer a case where you need to be an Excel expert uh, to be able to, you know, accurately chart or what have you. The thing is going to be able to, in, you can instruct it in natural language and it'll produce something. Uh, Johannes, wonderful to see you. Thanks for being very patient, man. Um, Johannes, um, uh, can you uh, quickly introduce yourself, who are you, what it is you do? I can absolutely quickly introduce myself. So I am Johannes Sundlo. I work as a senior HR manager at the gaming studio. So you heard that you like uh, gaming, Alan. Uh, that is what I do. I get paid to sometimes game. Me too. Uh, but on the, on the, on the uh, uh, more importantly, maybe for this topic is that uh, on my spare time, I run uh, a newsletter called Fustag HR, and I run a YouTube video as well, um, uh, where I really, like my aim and passion is in life, it has always been for the last 14 years to help HR understand all, all things digital. And now, obviously, it's, I mean, everything is related to AI now. So it's, it's, it's been a lot of AI uh, in the last, last 11 months or 10 months or whatever it has been yeah it, it, it's chat gpt has been around only the anniversary is coming uh, know. and you know what it's it's been a game changer in that period and we're gonna look back on these last four months and things wow how amazing um uh johannes why don't you share the links to your newsletter and your youtube uh, channel into the chat yeah. stream and i'm sure lots of people might be interested I, in I uh, absolutely and 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 i should state like i mean it's free like i do this because for the for the greater community that is that is my aim I know that, you know, one can always argue around like, okay, what's the quality of YouTube videos? But I, I try my best at least. Uh, but yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> listen, anybody doing YouTube as a, as a sideline, I, I give full credit because it's still much harder to produce a decent uh, video on YouTube. Yeah, I um, I mean, the, this is the reason why TikTok has is, is been such a, a rocket ship because you can do it all on the mobile phone. YouTube kind of missed the boat on that. Um, okay. Uh, 100%. Yo Johannes, let's get to it. Yeah. Um, last six months only, what have you encountered in ch either ChatGBT or in generative AI or side of ChatGBT yeah. that you can say recruiters need to be using this? No, but I, I think one, well, because there's been so uh, much good talk going on as well. And I mean, we heard use cases where custom instructions, which I think is fantastic. But one thing that hasn't been mentioned, which I think is really good, and, and ChatGPT does a decent job, uh, at least if you pay it for it, but there's other, also other, you know, gen AI tools available, such as Bard from Google. Uh, and I think Bard does an excellent job of one thing, and that is checking up salary. So if you want salary brackets, you can actually ask Bard to, hey, this is the role. This is the city. This is the experience the candidate bring. I mean, obviously, you can you can go on endlessly around explaining that, and then you can also ask Bard uh, to give you three independent sources, uh, and now you can also check the sources in Bard. So you have a little Google button you can uh, push, and you can actually check that. And in my experiences, and when I'm talking to people as well, uh, just around you know people who started using it, it's fairly okay. Like it's not. A, I wouldn't sort of. I wouldn't take poison on that. It's a hundred percent correct salary bracket, but I would at least, you know, I, I use it as some kind of benchmark and people use it as some kind of benchmark. And if you are, as, for example, if you're not paying for external benchmark, which can be like quite expensive, then, well, then you have a fantastic tool at your disposal for free, which is insane. And it is insane because that's one of the mysteries that we've always had. Like, what is the salary? And in fact, the information has always been out there. We just could never retrieve it accurately. But now, no. with 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 these GPTs, it's possible to generate 
the information because the thing's already ingested all of the data already. And I like the fact it produces the sourcing um, yeah. and presumably you can kind of force it to produce those sources or not answer it or that you can give it a confidence rating, I guess, or tell it exactly. how confident are you uh, that this is accurate. Um, yeah, yeah, very so, so, yeah, that, that, that's my one of my sort of favorite use cases. And 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 uh, yeah, as I, as I said, like it used to be super cumbersome, right, to get uh, salary data. That is, you know, you have to go to all these legacy vendors and you get up that that's updated once a year. And now, like, it pulls all the sources automatically. So it's yeah, it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, but, you know, in Bard, you can actually uh, you can actually g give it uh, like uh, it's not a confidence rating, but it's it's uh, Bard points you to where it found the information. And if it didn't find the information, it marks it yellow, which means it's not confident that, you know, I, I assume this basically, which is a, a good thing with Bard. Ala, you about to say something, I think? Uh, yeah, I want to say something about uh, what was mentioned about the confidence rates and also uh, what is already mentioned, that's good. Um, also about the location. Uh, is it more like United States based uh, salaries information because uh, Europe is always quite challenging to find in yeah. salary so, ranges. So, so I'm I'm Swedish based. So, so obviously I've I tried it for all of Sweden and not uh, not Sweden as a whole, but more specifically locations in Sweden. And that is what like, the main data points I have is from Sweden, basically for different locations in Sweden. Uh, obviously, Sweden is a bit different because we have um, a lot of open source. Uh, so, salary is not hidden in 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 Sweden, basically. So, there's a lot of uh open source uh, material in regards to uh, to salaries so i i don't know exactly how it works in the rest of europe but uh, so far it seems to be working decently well at least yeah and the test here is look give it a shot pull the information and when you speak to a candidate just say hey listen you, you, recruiters are good at getting the ballpark yeah. i mean uh, at the at the end of the day yes we care about data but don't forget that the conversations you have with candidates itself is really, really good data. It's primary source, um, uh, you know, so that is something that you then compare with generated data. Um, and the combination between those two, I think will get you to where you need to go. Um, so I, great stuff. Go ahead. I think it's all, yeah, but I think it's also interesting, like, uh, because as you said, like this is 11 months old technology, like it's, it's fairly new technology. And I would, I would assume that if you sort of extrapolate this in the future, it would be even better in the future. Uh, which, I mean, if I were a Mercer or an Aeon or like the big players here, I would be a bit worried around, okay, what's coming for us. But yeah, we'll see. Give us one more, um, Johannes, um, one more use case that you've yeah. uh, you've encountered that you thought, okay, yeah, but I mean, yeah, this is... It's, it, it's, it, you know, I, 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 I'm a lazy person sometimes. And uh, if I just need, you know, uh, if I need to hire for a new role uh, to get me up to speed, like I really use it as a coach. And someone mentioned that earlier as well, like, so if I need to know more about a certain role or a certain trade, like I go in back and forth, like teach me everything you know about this. What what, what does a person like this do? What does good look like? Uh, and we go back and forth basically like a coach. And obviously I like, I have colleagues, so I can talk to them as well, but you know, having this instant availability for someone to, to teach me about the subject or, or something that I don't know anything about or very little about, to get more knowledgeable and to then present myself better to a candidate. I think that is, it's, it, I still marvel at the abilities it has and now I, I pay for it. So, so obviously I can talk to it, but like, it's, you know, like calling someone, <laughs> which is also like still mind blowing. That is like having a phone call with some super knowledgeable person uh, that can answer all my questions more or less. It, um, yeah. And yeah. um, um, by the way, when Johannes is saying, talk to it, he's literally saying, talk to it. Right. So, yeah, yeah, um, Download it on your phone, and it yeah. basically you can just talk your prompt in, and it will try and it'll it'll transcribe it and say, "Is this what you want?" Then you press play, and it'll it'll interact with the thing. So very fast on the go, it's a real help. So I think definitely get it in your yeah. pocket. You need to be walking around with it. It's going to help you. Yeah. Um. So I, cool. Very, very good. Um, okay, yeah. Johannes, listen, um, we're going to actually keep you on the on the show because what we're going to do is answer these questions firstly, um, and you're going to help us do this. 
Um, okay. So, okay, let's let's answer the first one. First, I said, what was the link of the twenty-five candidates? Okay, this is um, uh, Alex Van Claveren. He's going to do this uh, of candidate. Um, I think uh, Allah has. Oh, we have this nice little thing come up. I didn't. This is a new innovation. I like it. Um, so, um, so yeah, basically, Alex, was it Alex VK uh, at um, candidate with a K dot uh, dot com? Go and email him, and uh, he'll he'll take care of it. Uh, okay, next question from Emmanuel. We have. Please talk more about custom instructions uh, via context and personas. We kind of done that. Check out Alexandra's uh, cut and paste version. By the way, folks, would it be interesting for us to share our custom instructions? I wonder whether that would be a cool thing to try and do. Um, like if we just collect them together, we'd have a little browse to see what people are doing. I think that would be interesting. But let me know in the chat whether you agree. Um, should we find a way to share our own custom, custom instructions so that we can learn from each other? Uh, let us know. Okay, the next question from Luke Davis. Uh, do you enter different personas each time or have them as multiple presets? Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Johannes? You, is it a different persona or? I, I, I can't remember uh, the name of the guy now. Was it Dave? No. Uh, Dolph. Yeah, Dolph. Dolph. Sorry, I, uh, the way he, he describes in chat like that, he has different uh, chats going on with different personas. I have the exact, exact same structure. So I have different personas in ChatGPT for different purposes. So yeah, so that is what I do. Uh, so, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Uh, so that's yep. how I do it at least. But I, I don't know if that's good or bad. That's just how I, you know, did it once and then I continued to have it like that. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, okay, found one. What is the name? Uh, what was the name of the tool that paraphrase YouTube videos, or should we say, uh, summarize them? Um, that was something that Alexandra had, wasn't it? But Alex, share it in the chat because uh, we can't remember. Um, I also oh. mentioned one uh, on my uh, the list that I shared. It's a YouTube summary. Uh, yeah, it's there is a link for extension that you can use, and it's it's going to give you the summary. So also okay. That sounds like something we should all care about and use. Um, we're coming to the end of this show, folks. And what I want to try and do is m flick on the open stage. Let's go for it. Um, so the reason why we're doing this is basically let's all get together. Anybody who wants something to say or, you know, a question not answered, whatever, uh, click on, uh, come onto screen and just have a, just talk to us. Um, please be bearing in mind that, you know, this goes out to a, a global audience, you know, probably these young people watching be appropriately dressed etc etc um and uh, and yeah uh if you're interested walk on and let us know what you think um okay um in terms of the um next big thing uh, what do we think is going to be the next big thing coming out of generative ai any any kind of thoughts on this so, so one thing that I've been I've been doing uh, way too much research research, and I'm gonna I'm about to drop an article about this as well on full stack uh, is the upcoming AI, AI EU regulations. It's not that fun, but it, like I, I they're about to pass like they pre passed the law this more this summer, and it's most likely gonna hit us somewhere during Q4. Uh, we don't know more. It's more uh, it's up in there still, but. I think that will impact us in some way. So that is where my head is at right now. It's not innovation, but it impacts us at least. Have you researched it, uh, Johannes? Have you read the act and what have you? I, I have read the act. Um, yeah, <laughs> I tried cool. to summarize it, but the, the summary is that you know you need to basically you need to be uh, able to explain how you use AI if you use it for, uh, for example, recruitment. Uh, so you need to be able to just articulate. Okay, this is the this is the, on the basis it made the selection, for example. Uh, wherever how i would use it so yeah yeah um it might be interesting to get you back for another show on that because yeah. i think that again this is happening do you know exactly when it's definitely 2024 no. it, it's it, it, it's uh, it's out for what do you say like remit within the member countries so they sent they 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 passed the, the first instance passed this this summer and then they sent it out to all the member states to give their input and to sort of uh work it through then they're going to send it back if and if they give, give a thumbs up they uh, assume they assumed at least when they sent it out to the member states that it was going to be passed before 2024 mm -hmm. uh but i i would i would guess that it's a bit delayed uh but they think that they will enforce it in the next coming two to three years because there will be a leeway as well uh, into the into the law as well so yeah it's yeah, yeah, and by, by the way, there's a mini career uh, set up for people that want to be AI yeah. auditors and AI consultants. Uh, we talked to, we talked about this last week. 
Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, okay, listen, um, definitely share with me um, that blog post. I'd be very interested in it, Johannes. Yeah. But let's leave it there. We've got a, we're out of time. Um, so thank you for joining the show, Johannes. Wonderful to see you. Um, I will get you back next time. Um, okay, folks, that's about it. No one's interested in coming on screen. That's totally fine. This is exactly the experience we anticipate. It's Friday afternoon. No one's got their makeup on. Um, I totally understand. Um, we're, we have to leave it there, folks. We're out of time. Uh, we're going to be back next week, but in a different time because I'll be in a different place. I'm going to be in Colombia. So we're going to do a show um, in, on Wednesday um, at 2.45 p.m. in the afternoon, UK time. That'll be 9 o'clock or sort of 8.45 a.m. Uh, Columbia time. And it's going to be how to hire in LATAM. So we've got a bunch of people coming on that know Latin America. And it's going to be how do we hire people in Latin America? How do we do it if we're there? How do we do it if we're trying to relocate? How do we do it if we're remote? It's going to be really exciting. So uh, no Friday. Um, uh, we're going to basically do a double header the week following. Uh, so on the 10th of November, there's going to be two Brave Food Lives, one at 10 o'clock, one at 12 o'clock, one at 2. Uh, follow the channel. It's probably the best way to keep in touch. Uh, but thanks for watching, everybody. Um, it's been wonderful having you. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Cool. That was very exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it's always like a lot of learnings. People are like, oh, yeah, I, I'm going to scrape the chat definitely and get all these links and uh, go through all the things people shared. Such a generous community you created, Han. Such well, a I generous. Imagine. I, I, okay, yeah, you build the platform. You 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 uh, yeah, you yeah, the yeah, platform I, where we can hang out. So this is also a big this deal. is it. So, this yeah. is it. It's like it's like a, it's like an open bar, right? People can just rock in yeah. and, and turn up. <laughs> but I tell I tell you something. Uh, the the hunger for the information is there, and I, th I still get the sense that a lot of people haven't moved forward from the first experimentation. Um, but some of the things that you're talking about, I think, really help. Doing a bit of a course on it, just spending some time. If you carve out 10 hours of YouTube and just watched how to do it, you'll you'll improve. Um, and, and it will up-level your game in, in a big way. Anyway, what, what's your plans this weekend, Ala? You got anything exciting on? Yeah, I actually wanted to mention about the future plans. I thought you were going to ask me uh, separately, but uh, I okay. want to learn. <laughs> Sorry about that. I want to learn how AI are going to talk to AI and how I'm, as a person, what I'm going to do. In a way, I'm not afraid at all. But if there will be like, you know, automated service, uh, automated and this all the workflows, etc. Because, you know, yesterday, one of my automations broke. And I haven't noticed it, and like I haven't received a lot of things, and uh, things like you know now I have to restore it, fix it in the middle, and see if it's if it's running again. So I'm curious to see how I think, uh, yeah, like how AI going to be connected with AI, and how I can manage this process. So and I see people saying interesting topic indeed, yay! So <laughs> do you do you know anybody who's implemented um, a personal AI? Uh, I need to think of, uh, I know, uh, like the, the tools, the, the companies that are generating workflows between the eyes, like uh, the ones I mentioned, like uh, make.com, I think the biggest, uh, Bardeen and uh, Zapier. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're still on the phase where we build these workflows, but um, I don't know probably anyone yet who can explain us how we can fix things between the eyes and how we can use it. So no, I don't, I don't have an answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I might, I might do it. I might just like give AI access to my historical email, everything. You know what I mean? Like absolutely everything, and then just say, right, create, create a digital, create robo hung. This needs to happen, um, and then just as an experiment, right, to see, okay, does it actually operate, and does the robot version do the things that I need it to do, uh, and am I in control of it? Like, what's the relationship I have with this thing? um because i would feel more comfortable if it was a hierarchical relationship to be honest with you um you know you gotta be able to switch that thing off uh, all right listen um you have a good weekend ala wonderful to see you um i'll catch up with you soon i don't know when did i tell you i'm gonna be in the netherlands um when? in about a couple of weeks but it's, it's not in amsterdam though so it's uh, i'm gonna go to can... eindhoven for four days i don't want you to go to eindhoven no um, no no it's easy it's easy so just tell me when you are here so no i'm very happy to meet you and it will be easier for me rather than mail you the chocolate i can give you the chocolate no the listen listen <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when Let's i'm in town that. if you happen to be there we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll get a lunch Let's or something um but uh, yeah Thank all you. right you have a good weekend i'll see you soon okay bye bye everyone
devil is happening here? Stop recording.